Meatball Ronnie. Meatball Ronald even has recently announced his presidential candidacy and it couldn't have gone better. It was pro it was the peak of cinema. Peak comedy. I don't think I've ever seen, heard, or listened to anything legitimately more entertaining than the insufferable corporate Zoom meeting that was the Twitter space that he launched his candidacy in. It was so fantastic, so funny, and frankly, just overall a 10 out of 10 performance from everybody involved. It definitely wasn't uh, terrible and insufferable to listen to. It definitely didn't make me damn near fall asleep at work, and it definitely, definitely was normal. It was very normal, and there's nothing to worry about what happened in there. Now, I only got to listen to the actual corporate Zoom meeting type beat for a very small amount of time. I saw that it ran for like two hours, but frankly, I didn't have two hours to devote to it at the time. And to be honest with you, unless I'm going to stream it, which, hey, if that's what you all want, that's what you all want. But unless I'm going to stream it, I'm frankly just not going to consume it. But in the time that I did consume it, the small five or so minutes, it was glorious. Now let's just ignore that whenever I tried to go listen to it, it just crashed my Twitter app because the system that Elon built is so incredibly terrible that it can't even handle like basic audio streaming, much less like video and much, much less HD video. But instead of focusing on that, let's focus on what Meatball Ronnie had to say. Now, when I actually got into the space and wasn't being, like, rejected by Twitter, it was so painful to sit through. Frankly, it was just boring, and I do not see how a boring person can win a Republican primary when the other person is, like, the peak of entertainment. Love him or hate him, you have to admit that he is the peak of entertainment. And if he was just in a vacuum, I really think he'd be the funniest person alive in a vacuum. That is how strongly I feel about how charismatic Donald Trump is. He is incredibly charismatic. And that is, if you're a Republican weirdo fascist, a great thing. And if you're normal, a very, very bad thing. But anyways, in the short amount of time that I was there, I was able to catch some absolute gems coming from the mouths of... Elon Musk, Meatball Ronnie, and David Sachs, who I can only assume is the much lamer cousin of Andrew Sachs. And I think it's about time that we take a look at these absolute, stellar, pristine condition gems. And if we can't have an honest debate in a free country about uh, issues that affect hundreds of millions of people, like lockdowns, then what good is the First Amendment at that point? That is, of course, assuming that things that work should be debated. That's like saying, oh, hey, the wheel works. How about let's just, like, debate the wheel? That's, it, it, it's incredibly stupid. It should be pretty self-evident how stupid it is to be like, oh, hey, let's just debate things that objectively work. Like, <laughs> unless you're debating for it, I don't really see a reason to debate things that are objective. That's just stupid. So when Elon Musk uh, stepped up to purchase Twitter, uh, he paid a lot of money for it. Uh, and I'm sure because he's a good businessman, Elon, I'm sure you'll, you'll end up making money off it. But the bottom line is you had to put your money where your mouth is uh, because I think you recognize that uh, you can't have a free society uh, unless we have the freedom to debate the most important issues that are affecting our civilization. Hey, I'm John Cannell. And today on Preppy Kitchen, we're making delicious glazed donuts. This is obviously assuming that objective facts are up for debate, which they they aren't. And this is also assuming that Elon is a good businessman, which he isn't. He is hemorrhaging money, and in any competent business, he would be kicked out because his goal is not to make money, like any good CEO's goal should be. His goal isn't to make money, it's to spread far-right, borderline Nazi ideas, 
because he is a far-right borderline Nazi and he wants more people to agree with him, just like our boy Meatball Ronnie. As you, as you highlight uh, that, uh, the, the, the First Amendment is re irrelevant if uh, all the media and all the and, and the government are operating in lockstep. Before I say anything else, can I just say Elon is a terrible speaker? He's so monotone and he trips over every single thing he wants to say. And, you know, it's not like you can say, oh, English is his second language. No, it isn't. It's his first language. He grew up in South Africa as a white person. English is his first language. Like, you can't use that excuse. And you can't say, oh, it's his accent. No, because, like, any sort of British anything accent is super inherently expressive, for better or worse. In my opinion, it's grating. But that's beside the fact. Elon is such a bad, terrible, no good speaker. And it really shows to the desperation of the right that that is, like, their guy. Somebody who is so void of charisma, they can't even get a single word out. That is their dude. That really speaks to how desperate they are for forward-facing speakers. I like to also point out that he is pro-freedom of speech, yet anti-press. I don't really see how you can be both. You're either one or the other. You're either pro-people speaking or you're not, or you're normal and you're somewhere in between like me. But he, I love how he's a free speech absolutist until it comes to things he disagree with. And that is like half of what the press is. It's people who disagree with him being normal about it. And that, I just love that about him. I love how he's so, so, so upfront with his, with his hypocrisy, yet he just can't seem to figure it out and just take the L on the being anti-media point. He just won't take that L and be like, oh, people are allowed to criticize me. Whatever he can do, he cannot concede that because he is so fundamentally mind broken that he doesn't even see that as the apparent hypocrisy that it is to any normal person. And if you look at cities like Baltimore and Chicago, you got kids more likely to get shot than to receive a first class education. Yet I don't see the NAACP batting an eye about all the outrage and the carnage that's happening in those areas. So all right, I think it's fun fact time. Fun fact, I live in Texas. I live south of Houston. I am also more likely to get shot than I am to have a quote unquote first class education. Do you know why? It's because I will never have a first class education. Do you know why that is? For my foreign audience that may not know, the US has these things called private schools. It's where they lock all of the business education. It's where they lock really all of the education of the ruling class of America. It is how they separate us from them. It is how they keep this constant supremacy over everybody else. They do it through these expensive, first rate, private schools, and I will never have access to that. Therefore, I am more likely to be shot than I am to get a first class education. Fun fact, guys. And platforms like Twitter are there where people can debunk these lies in real time. And I would just say as an American citizen, if you are uncritically accepting narrative spun by legacy media and left wing groups, you're failing at your job. Uh, of being a conscientious citizen. Uh that is awfully funny because I seem to see more like fact checking under conservative posts and conservatives are gonna hear this and they'll be like, oh, fact checkers? Hmm, I don't fact checkers have a liberal bias? Well, yeah, y facts have a liberal bias. It it's really as simple as that. If facts have a liberal bias, a left-wing bias, not necessarily liberal, but a left-wing bias that says more about your ideology than it does the fact checkers, the people who are paid real life money or volunteer their time to keep people in check, to keep them factual. It says more about your ideology if it is constantly being fact-checked to the point where it triggers you you have to get mad about it 
You have to hate the fact checkers. It says more about you than it does them. It says you are anti-fact and you don't care about being right. You just care about spinning your narrative because you're Republican and that's all you can do because facts don't agree with you. Worth pointing out that we have in Florida more black owned businesses than any state in the nation. Uh, and we've also had more African-Americans lead state agencies under my administration than at any time in Florida history. But with us, you know they're there because of merit, not because we're trying to play identity politics. And I love, I love, love, love how Republicans keep trying to be this like anti-id poll party, but every single time they are the ones who bring it up, they're like, oh yeah, what about Candace Owens? Hmm, she is a black woman. Or oh, 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 oh yeah, what about Milo Le Neonopolis or whatever his name is? Milo Minneapolis, um, he, he who <laughs> is a quote unquote converted gay man. They'll bring up these like fringe examples in Idpol because they love Idpol. It is their favorite thing ever. And if they can have a token black person, a token gay, a token Asian, a token Hispanic on their side, they will do every single little thing to prop them up. How do you think these like charisma void idiots get to any sort of public speaking power? It is through id poll of the conservative party. The rest of the five minutes of the recording that I have is literally just Elon stumbling every single sentence saying nothing at all. And you know, instead of doing that, he could have been using his time to suck Ron DeSantis' dick a little harder, to be honest with you. Because if I was a non-natural born US citizen who will never ever be eligible for president, unless little meatball Ronnie uh, can somehow do something about that, I would be trying to kiss up to him so hard because it's so clear that they're in each other's pockets. It's just like a fact that they're in each other's pockets at this point. And you know, if I'm Elon, I want to suck big Ronnie's meatball penis for as long and hard as I can, man, because that is the only way I'll ever have any sort of political power in the country of the United States of America if I'm Elon Musk. Now I'm not Elon Musk, thank god, I'm not retarded, but if I was, that's probably what I'd be doing right now. Now little Ronnie did release a campaign ad, I'm not gonna subject that to y'all either because it's just the standard shit. It is just the standard Republican, we gotta take America back, we gotta make America strong. We gotta make the guns be our wives. It's just that kind of shit. You already know what I'm talking about. So I don't really think I need to show it off in all of its super cringy glory. I think if you really, really, really wanna say it, see it, you can just go see it for yourself. But Meatball Ronnie, my special boy, has announced his candidacy for president. And honestly, I don't see a single iota of a quark of a molecule's chance that he gets past the primaries hopefully ideally he splits he he splits the vote he doesn't back down he go he runs as an independent he splits the republican vote two ways and ensures a joe biden landslide that is of course not gonna happen unless <laughs> But if that is, of course, realistically never going to happen because, you know, these politicians are a little smarter than that. Trump, maybe not, but I know DeSantis is at least a little bit smarter than Trump. He is more effective than Trump when it comes to policy making for fascism. And frankly, he'd be a scarier president than Trump, if I'm being honest with you. And why do I say this, you may ask? Well, at the end of the day, Trump is a businessman who will do anything that makes the loudest people clap their hands the hardest. Not necessarily what is best, not necessarily what is worse, but just what makes the loud, annoying people go ah and clap their hands. It, that's all he does. He's not an effective fascist, even though in practice he is a fascist. He'll never go that far, because ideologically, he cannot. Ronnie DeSantis, on the other hand, will go that far because he doesn't care about business, he doesn't care about people, he cares about fascism, and that is it. 
Ronnie would be a much more dangerous president than Trump, and I don't really think it's particularly close. So if you're giving me, you know, the good old douche or the shit sandwich, I am taking the douche all day. Of course, the douche in this analogy being Donald, Donald J. Trump. Because with at least one of them, one of them is so ideologically brain broken that they will do anything for fascism. But the other is saying, hey, let's do this fascist thing for business interests. Oh wait, this fascist thing doesn't align with business interests? Let's not do that anymore. At least one of them is like marginally better. And when I say marginally, I mean like the lowest, like low of the low better. I don't mean like good. I mean like one is terrible and the other is horrible. You know what I mean? But there is absolutely no way my little special boy Ronnie makes it past the primaries going against the force of charisma that is Donnie J. Trump. Unless like a freak accident happens and Trump dies on stage. And even then, I think he would get more votes than Ron DeSantis. I think Trump's dead, rotting, fucking old ass corpse would get more votes than Ronald DeSantis in any state he can be in. I think Prime DeSantis gets dogged by current Trump, and it's not even particularly close. But anyways, that's about all I have to ramble about today. Um, if y'all enjoyed the video, you know, might as well subscribe and maybe even like hit the bell or something so that you get notified every single time I upload. That'd be kind of cool, I think. Um, but yeah, leave a like if you liked it and don't do anything if you disliked it. Don't leave a dislike. Whatever you do, do not leave a dislike if you dislike this video. If you dislike this video, do not engage with it, no matter what. Don't engage with it at all. Don't feed my content to the algorithm. Don't. Please don't. Ah, I'm so scared. But, uh, anyways, seriously, uh, thank y'all for the support, and I'll see y'all next time. Bye. Learning how to hold on. Yeah. Ball had a nigga out here looking like Frozen. I admit that I was caught in my emotions. Life comes in layers. Be prepared for the ozone. Can you put me back where you found me? Maybe I was better off drowning. Maybe I was better off never stepping foot on Rhode Island. There was no going back. Small town things, it's too late. Looking at the skies, 